Hi guys, hope everyone is safe and well um, with the lockdown situation that we're still within and looks like it's going to be extended. Um, today I'm going to do another quick video tutorial in my living room and this week we're going to be taking a look at doing some smoke photography using an incense stick and how to set the scene up and also how to process the image afterwards. Not sure if you saw my video last week, but we were using two speed lights with a small fish tank in the living room and doing a little bit of splash photography, uh, just putting two limes into the uh, into the tank and trying to capture the moment they go in. Um, but if you didn't see that, head over, take a look at that one. Um, massive thanks to everyone um, who has seen that video and also commented. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like what you see, please uh, you know, please uh, give me the thumbs up and also maybe hit that subscribe button as well. That'd be fantastic. So let me show you what I've got set up today and how we're gonna go about taking this picture. Okay, so the corner of my room by here, um, I've set this scene up ready then. Uh, what I've got, I've got a uh, piece of black uh, muslin cotton, uh, which you can get off Amazon reasonably uh, cheap. Uh, I happen to have it under the stairs. Uh, you don't have to use that. It's quite elaborate, should we say, for what we're doing. Uh, I, last time I did this I used a piece of black card I've got from Hobbycraft but I've used that for something else that's now gone and I can't get to Hobbycraft so I'm just improvising and I'm just using this black muslin as you can see by here. Uh, the setup then okay, is really straightforward the, here's a newer or Godox AD200 and um, I've got by here um, the barn doors on with a with a grid you don't have to use that uh, last time I did this I use a single speed light standard speed light attached to the camera with an off-camera cord but you can use a cheap raid with trigger like the young news and I just modeled up um, a little um, you know a little barn door like snood sort of thing um, out of a piece of black card so you know it doesn't have to be as elaborate as that uh, over here then uh, I've got the inset and stick ready to go um, and I've got the cameras then by here and today what I'm going to be using is my Pentax K1 uh, I'm using this funky Godex um, trigger can't remember exactly what it is but I'll put a link to that in the description and I've also got on here then the Pentax F 50mm f1.7 um, in the last video um, I didn't actually have the center column um, attached to the tripod uh, this tripod by here is the Benro TMA 38 CLs and that's the big B5 ball head which is humongous but it doesn't move it's fantastic and the reason why I put the center column back in is that I want to actually have um, the, that uh, intense thing I just want the, the bottom corner of it in the frame so what I need to do is focus up the camera and once the camera has been focused I lock it into manual focus um, and then move the center column up and by doing that what it does then it just literally puts this tip by here just puts it in the bottom of my viewfinder and I'll show you that right now Okay, so uh, this is the back of my camera and uh, like last time I've just extended the shutter speed on the live view so you can pretty much see what's going on in the frame. Now you can see all this background by here and I'm not worried about that because the way the flash is coming in from the side and side lighting and we've got the barn doors in place, the light is not going to spill onto that background so I'm not actually worried about that in any way shape or form. But at the, at the bottom, you can see that this here, okay, is the bottom of the intent stick and it's just within the frame. I could, if I want to, maybe extend the sense column up to actually get it all the way out, but maybe in some of the pictures, I might want to actually have that tip in. If I don't want it in, I can just crop it out. So that is how it looks at the moment. And because I couldn't remember what it was called earlier on, it's called an X Pro P for Pentax. There we are. Okay, so this is the back of the camera, just showing the settings that I'll be using. I'm going to be using 125th per second at f11 and ISO 100. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet, as you can see, I'm currently set to high speed continuous shooting, which I don't actually need. I'm going to go back and put that back into single shot, like so. Auto balances, auto white balances before, I don't need to play with that. And um, because I've already taken this um, already and I've metered, if I was to take a picture now, yeah, you can see absolutely nothing going on in there. The flash is set to 132 power and side lighting, sent with the radio trigger. I'm going to take this picture now 
and what we can see is we can see the intense link by here and again nothing for let me just quickly go back and show because it's quite quick um, pardon the reflection um, it was funny first time around and now it's just annoying but you can see the background is completely black there's nothing there at all because the light isn't hitting that because we flagged it off uh, but what we do see by here okay is the incense stick so that is there Okay, so I'm not sure you can see, but of course there is the incense stick and it's lit. Um, I've probably mentioned this already um, in the video, but just in case um, I didn't, uh, if you leave it alone, you'll just burn straight up. Um, so what I want to do is I want to adjust how uh, the smoke looks. So I'm going to come in and what I might do is try and squash it down. I might try and swirl it with my hand. As you can see now, yeah, I quite, oop, quite like that. So I'm going to just retake that picture now. Um, and it's just really a case of just trying to bend that, that smoke, waiting for something nice to happen. Um, and then when it does, just taking the picture. One thing I have noticed is that as it burns down, the flame is, is, or the smoke I should say, is moving across. So as it does that, you need to obviously keep on adjusting how you're taking your pictures. So I'm just moving, um, you know, panning the camera to, you know, to suit. Now, the beauty of this again is the trial and error aspect of it. I just found quite a nice little thing. If I found this side, just to pull it across, it seems to work quite well that. Oop, I'll do it again now. See how it makes them little swirls in the smoke? Yeah, I really like that, it looks really good. I'm gonna try and get some slightly higher ones now. Fantastic. That one's like a tulip, that one there, then. Okay, so I think that's probably um, all the pictures I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with. We can keep on taking and taking. You know, it's quite, it's quite addictive, really. Um, but I don't think um, that I need to take any more than what I've got at the moment. I think I'm quite happy with... He says that as he... He says that as he keeps on taking pictures. It's hard not to, isn't it? Let me just make sure this is in the right place. Yeah, perfect. Okay, right, I think what I'm gonna do now then is I'm gonna stop taking pictures now, he says, for a second time. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll load these up into Lightroom and I'll show you guys what pictures I've taken. <laughs> and, um, uh, and also as well um, how I'm going to process them. So let's get into uh, into Lightroom. Last one, I promise. Okay, so it's the following day and I've imported the images into Lightroom and done some basic edits, but I'm going to quickly show you all of the images as they are. Um, really quickly remember obviously that first picture we took and you can see it's completely blank there's nothing there at all um, if I were to take a look at the clipping yeah you can see in terms of the clipping 
um, the way that the flash was set up it stopped any light spilling onto the background and so it's completely uh, dark rendered uh, nothing there so I don't have to worry about that um, that uneven background um, looking at this second picture then coming up you can just about see then okay that at uh, that, that um, top of the uh, the stick there the uh, incense stick um, and if you remember we had obviously the issues where um, that's there that's the smoke it wasn't that, that powerful so we turned up the power uh, and again we can now see it so and the uh, the smoke goes straight up unless you waft it so I'm gonna just quickly head over to the ones which I have um, edited already uh, and I'm going to show you these edits really, really quickly. Now, if you look across on this side by here, um, all I've done here is just raise the whites, just brought the blacks down. You'll notice on some of them that I have gone and played with the vibrance and the saturation, and uh, with some of them as well. If I scroll down, okay, into here, uh, some of these I've adjusted at some of these uh, the hues and the saturations here um, in this part. Um, but apart from that, they're very, very basic edits. So uh, this this is the first one, and I really like this little uh, kink. Uh, in the smoke. Um, if I have a little look by here, did I do anything to this one? No, there's nothing here in terms of the uh, the brush. Um, pressing J, there we are, we can see that uh, we've just got the flash um, hitting this area. Um, just moving across then, um, same image. What I've done with this one a bit differently, if I scroll down, remember I talked about this section by here, this HSL section. Um, and what I've done is I just adjusted the hue of the blue just to give it that slight sort of uh, that teal color. Let me just scroll back up. Okay, uh, this one by here, um, same thing. Um, turned the vibrancy saturation up and I've just adjusted then um, the slider by here, turning the hue right up to give me that purple uh, effect that I've got by there. On some of them as well, um, I'm not sure if I've done on this one yeah so this one by here you can just see that there's a few areas in here where I've just gone and I've just touched it up because there's a bit of smoke in these areas and I just wanted to make them look a little bit um, smarter um, if I was to take that out um, you, it doesn't really make a lot of difference does it really with that in and that out it's just just affecting obviously the background um, Yep, moving along then. Uh, this one by here, I quite like this one. I just see a face in this, uh, so I, I thought I quite liked it. These bits, I quite like these, are just things that just look a bit of a body. Um, and again, this one by here, uh, it's a bit messy, this one, but I, I quite like that in an artistic way. And again, see the vi the uh, vibrant saturation turned up just to, just to really pull out as much of the colour which is in that smoke as possible. Um, yeah, again, this one by like a flute. Now this one I know, okay, that I have actually gone and done some adjustments by here. Um, just a few areas where the background either uh, wasn't completely uh, rendered uh, with nothing at all, or maybe there was just a few little wafts of smoke by here I didn't really like, so they went. Uh, these are all very, very basic edits. Um, I quite like the white smoke on the black background. If you really, really wanted to, you could go into Photoshop, you could press Control and I, and what that would do, it would invert the colors, so then you would have black smoke on a white background. And I have actually taken some images before using the same setup. Uh, and what I've done is I've changed it from the black background to a white background uh, and then I've then gone and overlaid then a gradient fill uh, and then used one of the blending uh, modes. Uh, I've changed it to uh, like a rainbow effect which is quite nice to do but uh, I've done it before so this one I'm going to stick with the black and you know, the white smoke. Yep so these ones by end out again they're all very very basic edits. Um, let me just quickly go back into here now. Yeah, this one by here again. I'm just literally just uh, just taking some of the bits that I don't really like uh, and just removing them. Um, and just going to go through them one at a time. But what I'll do is I'll put these up at the end of the video when you can see them then um, to a bit of music because that's obviously what people do to make it look a bit more artistic. Um, so I won't bother going through all of these straight away. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Again, uh, feel free to uh, like and comment. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic.